This episode of After Dark is brought to you by Audible.com for a free 30-day trial as well as a free audiobook. Head on over to Audible.com slash GameBreaker. GameBreaker TV. Welcome to After Dark, the very last episode of 2013. I am Mike Schaffnitz. Did I scare you? Could have scared you, but I didn't. I am Mike Schaffnitz. Used the hell out of the other hosts, that's for sure. <laughs> I was like, what? I'm out of a job. Oh no. I'd like to I'd like to put in my application for anything Jesse Cox does. And uh I would like to be on cover terrain. And uh, legendary. Thank you. Zach Schultz, also known as Kiggles, right here on After Dark. Where is it? That's an. That's an. Oh, oh. I can't. I can't quite hear it. I was hoping I could hear it. That's fine. It's just I wanted it to move. Okay. Maybe it's better that you can't hear it. Would get the <laughs> video knocked off YouTube if you could. <laughs> right. That's what. I, that's why. I, that's why. That's why I turned it off really fast so we didn't get. <laughs> good call, good we call. Don't that. And joining us as always, Mr. Mike Byrne, also Hello, known sir. As Magic Man. Feeling How's much better. Going? Happy 2.1. Happy 2.1 to you XIV players out there. Happy 2.1. Oh, I thought you were feeling much better because you weren't in a Snuggie this time. The Snuggie is right behind me. Don't tempt oh. me. It was awfully cozy for the last After Dark, sir. It looked very cozy. It looked very warm. I've got to say, it looked very warm. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank you guys all for the thumbnail that was yeah. used to advertise the show. That was Amaze Balls when uh -huh. I'm sick as a dog the next day, sitting there just surfing the internet with my eyes bleeding, uh, and I come across the Facebook post and can't. Yeah. I'm just I'm so happy I do these shows with you, Shafnit. I know. You're just just amazing. Oh, you, you, make, you make us it's look uncanny. really good. <laughs> whatever. You know what? At least it's not as you know what I had a more. I've had at least three more, in, more embarrassing photos than that. I gotta say, I like this I'm, show. This is the one show where I don't get the embarrassing thumbnails. You guys usually <laughs> get the embarrassing <laughs> thumbnails on this show. It's, uh, it's a nice change of pace. Just gotta say. Very, very nice. All right, well, you know what? It's the last show of 2013. and um, So, yeah, we're ahead. Christmas Eve and then New Year's Eve, right? So, we yeah. no shows. I'm going to be gone. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm literally throwing my hands gonna... up in the air. Come come next Sunday, or come this Sunday, when I get on that plane, I'm done. I'm, I'm taking my vacation. I'm out. <laughs> we're, we're gonna, don't call we're me. Don't gonna... bother me. I'm going back to Illinois to drink with Kiggles. We're going to yeah, we're actually, see we're his gonna... white ass for 14 days. <laughs> we're actually going to bring a, uh, a, a computer to the bar, and we're going to live stream. We're going to live stream After Dark at oh the bar. God. Oh, my God. No. It's just going to be us doing shots. <laughs> that'll, that'll be called after shots, followed right up by vomit. Um, yeah, it's, it's called after stomach pumping. <laughs> a live call in show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and open up the lines, get a caller on here. We've got a couple Twitter questions, a couple callers, relatively short show from the sounds of it, but we'll see what we can make happen. And uh, it's a short show because we need you guys to call in. Yeah, if you haven't called in, you got to come and check out the show. That's simple. That simple. All right. Caller, you're on the line with Gameberg After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. Tell us your question. Hello, Kegels at Double Might. Double M. Is, uh, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> rude. Okay. <laughs> this is Mohammed from Saudi Arabia. What's up, That's Goofy? Triple M. Mohammed M. That's Triple M. Triple M and a K. Okay. This is, this is officially the MK. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't really care. It's double bikes for me. How's it going, Mohammed? What question you got for us? It's been great. And my question is, what makes a boss battle hard? <clears throat> what makes a boss Ooh. battle? This could go so many different ways. Because I think, let, let's look at this, guys, in, in, in two different fashions. Because there's, right. honestly, there's two different bosses. There's raid and MMO bosses. 
And then right. I think there's there's console bosses, and they are completely different beasts. So let's dissect it from from All the right. two That's angles fair. there. That's fair enough. What well, do you guys think? You're gonna dissect what you're gonna dissect MMO. I mean, you could go so many different ways with that. Um, new mechanics are always difficult, novel things, very very difficult at first until you get a hold of them. Um, What's What's the most okay? Because I see where, I see kind of what, where you're gonna go with this. Let's just throw it this way then. What's the most difficult encounter, MMO style that you can remember? And and just in case someone hasn't played that MMO, uh, ex give a give a quick synopsis of why that fight was so difficult. Even if you were learning it, even Ooh, if it was okay. fresh, yeah. Why was it difficult for you? And it, it, this was uh, w while my particular guild at the time was learning it, and we weren't progressive raiders by any stretch of the imagination but we were always in in my world of warcraft heydays we were always uh raiding current content well we may not be clearing it fast but we're raiding the current content uh and, and kiggles you could probably back this one up it was a real pain in the ass difficult hard to learn fight professor putricide icc the first time in there with all the different mechanics, all the different uh, blob fights. Then there was a, a another mechanic where one person in the raid had to jump into the big construct and Good run around. Who's everyone? <laughs> I fixed the poison slime pipes. <laughs> <laughs> and would have to run around and suck up the slime pipes while everybody's beating up on the professor. And that was there was an awful lot going on in that fight. And it got to the point where, and we weren't the wasn't only that, one. You could, go ahead. wasn't wasn't Professor Putricide the second to last heroic encounter that you did before moving on to Lich King, if I recall? That was like the one. That was the one that most people held off on until the very end, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure the chain of events now because that was so long ago. On which one you had to go through? I know to get through his wing, you had to go to the left and to the right in either order and kill the the two there. One was a spawn uh, boss with poison clouds that in you would well, it was... spawn, and the the other one was poison flowing into the room. That's the one Kiggles was quoting. With the the slime pipes have been turned back on. Putricide was in the middle. You had to clear him, though, to progress, and he was not right before the Lich King. He was, uh, there was, he was more in that after phase, him. He was in that phase where it wasn't the first one, but it was like you came up to the, the up, up the elevator after doing Gunship and after doing yes. uh, the, the, the Sorrowfang, I believe it was. Sorrowfang, yeah. Um, but then you had the Which option of either going Bloodwing, Frostwing, or uh, Abomination Wing. And, and if, if I just recall the, the heroic... Um, progression system because you had the ability to choose which wing you wanted to go down Professor Putricide was the last one that most guilds tried to tackle because yeah. they would say nope screw it we're going to go down Frostwing because Syndragosa is much easier we're going to go and down that's Bloodwing nothing that's not to take anything away from easier. Syndragosa Syndragosa wasn't an easy fight in my book either but for uh, maybe it was an anomaly I don't know uh, but our guild had a much easier time with Cindy than it did Professor Putricide. And I don't know if it was just a sheer mechanics or if it was a, a combination of so many different responsibilities. The mechanics themselves weren't hard, but there were so many different responsibilities. It wasn't your typical stay out of all the bad while we tank, we DPS, and we heal. I don't know what the combination was there, but it was just a really difficult fr fight for us to learn and master and finally get through. So I'm going to go a little different route, and I didn't do this one specifically when it was uh, pre-nerf, but I had friends who were in top guilds, and it was called the Guild Killer for a reason, and this one is pre-nerf Muru. Pre-nerf Muru was the most ridiculous fight you will ever see in WoW. Pre-nerf Muru was dumb. Dumb hard. <laughs> I don't even remember was... the mechanic. I remember Sunwell was one of those things that was like out of my... I had just left the world, uh, the, the realm first guild that I was in um, right around mid-Black Temple. So I never got to see Sunwell in its, in its tough form. But I just know everything in Sunwell was a bitch. Uh-huh. Um... So, yeah, I had friends who were in guilds that were doing Muru as progression, and it was just 
we would be rate we rated at the same time, and we were in a uh, Black Temple while they were in Sunwell, and we would come like I we would hang out afterwards, and it was just like they wiped for maybe a month and a half to two months, five days a week, four hours a day on Muru, and that wasn't that wasn't just that guild. That was literally all of the guilds pre nerf that was it it was the guild killer for a reason and i never got into it until like afterwards so it wasn't really hard because it had been figured out and i think at this point um i don't know i don't know where i was going with this but <laughs> so muru so muru was hard so here's <laughs> here's what i want to say we've been talking a lot about about wow and I don't want to simply say that the only good difficult bosses are in WoW. I'm oh no, because to... right now Titan Hard Mode is the one that's all over the internet as being, you know, hard MMO content. And now today with 2.1, happy 2.1, happy 2.1, uh, the Extreme Mode primals are in there. But they're hard. 2.1 or um, Hard Mode Titan is hard for a different reason. I think well, the here's... fight itself has mechanics that are repeatable. They're they're predictable down to the T is when they're going to happen, but the whole server architecture and the, the, the structure makes it unforgiving. When you make a mistake, that's it. If one or two people make a mistake, you're done. That's the end of the fight. You're insta-killed. So it's challenging for an entirely different reason than like yeah. the, the putrid I mean, side fight we were just talking about. And there's and there's there's fights that are hard because of mechanics that are white mechanics that if you don't handle them, they're going to wipe you. So if you handle them, then it's fine. But there's other things. There's gear check, which is hard if you don't have the gear until it's not hard anymore. And then there's just shitty fights where but, there's a lot of shit going on. I don't understand and, why you're complaining about Sunwell. We cleared that shit one shot like two weeks ago. Just it was <laughs> like, just went right through it. Well, this, it is break, this is kind of break, oh, hold on, hang on, because this is ex there. this is exactly what I want to get into here because specifically with MMOs. What makes a boss fight difficult? And I want to, I'm, I, I'm going to stroke the ego of World of Warcraft fans out there everywhere. <laughs> However, I don't want this to be about WoW. I'm going to use the example that I found in WoW, and I still think holds true to this day. What makes a fight or a boss difficult? And it's the encounter is so well-tuned that you can wipe to it long after you've outgeared it. Want to know my example? Heroic Lich King. If you go to Heroic Lich King right now, you will still lose if you do not do that fight correctly. That is a good and a hard boss fight simply because of the way that they programmed everything. If someone Mostly messes up a file, if someone hits a, hits a shadow trap, if someone explodes because they're horrible and don't know what to do with... Um, uh, ghosts, which yes, I'm sure ghosts necessarily don't one shot people anymore like they used to. So yeah, you're you're able to somewhat outgear it, but for the most part, heroic Lich King is still hard. It's not just as hard, but it's still hard to this day, like it was back in the day. And I think that's what makes a boss fight difficult because with the first set that you guys were kind of talking about, Putricide and Muru, everything in Sunwell, those are all outgearable you can blow through those because you're able to bl obliterate health almost instantaneously and i guess you could say that heroic lich king will eventually get to that point however i still feel that the way that they designed the encounter it m still makes it incredibly difficult you have to deal with shadow traps you have to deal with defile you have to deal with having the right person in the right place at the right time it gets easier but it's still wipeable and that's a good hard boss encounter I would agree. My friend still hasn't lived down. Um, shit, what's the hunter thing where you he disengaged off the platform of Lich King? You know how it like falls off. He disengaged and kill himself while we were while we were doing heroic Lich King, and he will never live that down to this day. We still, whenever he dies, we go, oh god, don't don't disengage, don't disengage. What Three was the what was the fight? And I, I was uh, when I came to WoW for the first time. It was Burning Crusade, yeah, very very early Burning Crusade. 
Um, what was the fight in, even going back and doing it as we were out-leveled, it was a nightmare fight. It was with the, the, the twins in AQ. What were they? Yeah. Twin was Emperors. that with the Gemini twins or whatever they were? The, the Twin Emps, yes. Those guys were a pain in the ass, like you're talking about, Shaft, that were even being out-geared and, and over-leveled, it was still a difficult fight to go back and do just to mess with some old content. Well, you still can't solo that because right. um, you need to have... Well, I don't, I don't know if you have a pet and you place it somewhere and it goes to the pet, but, yeah, if you don't have two people, they're just going to heal up constantly, and those little bugs get annoying. So what Even do you guys two think people, here? it's not very fun. Anyway, What do you ahead. guys think, then, about console? What's the hardest console boss you can oh. distinctly remember having a problem overcoming? See, I had problems with things so much younger, and now I go back and I play them, and it's not hard at all. And I guess it's because <laughs> I've played them before. Um, the hardest bosses... For me, the, the one I remember, the one console boss I remember, um, I believe it was Ifrit, not Ifrit, but it was Ifrit from Final Fantasy X. It was the dragon when you were flying on the airship. But that was only difficult because I was so under level by that point. I went on far ahead before I should, and I refused to run around the airship to level up my characters. I just wanted to beat the boss and move on. So I was bashing my face against a boss I technically wasn't ready for. And that's the only one I truly remember being yeah. hard. But I think some of the most mechanically hard, I don't know. Have you guys tried to go back and play any of the Mega Mans recently? I used to be, a, like, I used to be good at Mega Man. I can't play Mega Man for dick anymore. <laughs> I suck. Because you're, sing I'm trying because you're every, over every single Mega Man boss. In, and I've, tried, I've gone back recently and played Mega Man 2 and Mega Man X. I can't beat a single boss. See, I don't ha I don't have much of a problem with with Mega Man. I I'm, I can go with you on Final Fantasy, but I think those are those are challenging for exactly the reason you gave. Eventually, you can power your way through all the even the the harder content, the the ruby weapons, the all the all the, the gem weapons that are hidden and things like that. Uh, in all of the Final Fantasies, you tend to run into that brick wall very quickly, and it's Hard, 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 hard until you grind out a few levels and you come back. So I don't, I don't kind of count those because you know what you need to do to overcome you just, you a just Final don't Fantasy do boss. It. <laughs> yeah, you just don't want to do it. You, you try to beat your face into this thing to avoid going and grinding out a few levels. Uh, from what you're talking about, I don't have such a problem with like Mega Man's and platformers and things like that. Uh, I will admit that the first time. Uh, the first time through the original Legend of Zelda as a, as a young man, that fight with Ganon was very challenging. Had no idea how to fight an invisible foe, you know, and, and use what? where shots were coming Swing from. Swing around wildly so, is the answer. That was not hard. Oh, yeah, my So God. That, was, that was a bit of a, well... Okay, if the, if your answer is swing around wildly, Kegels, then yeah, sure. You know what? That's no, what you know what? You're supposed to no. swing this... your master sword and hope to no. God you hit him. Yeah, come no. on. No, listen, That's what listen. You're supposed you know... to do? I've killed him. It listen, is not. still, still the most annoying fight in that whole game is the stupid boss in the um in the third in the third uh, light world, the tower, um the snake thing. Where it would knock you the off. The one that knocks you down a floor. So annoying. Oh I, yeah, I, it the, took me yeah. That the one. first time. Yeah, the, oh, the invisible guy is so easy. The big worm with the glowing red ass that yes. tells you where to hit it is the hardest one. Get yes. the hell out of here. I because didn't say it was hard. hard. No, I, I agree with Kiggles. I said it was because annoying. That one, no, no, and I agree with Kiggles because that one sucks. You, even though you know where its weak point is, you could be like. You could be next to dead, and you've, like, expended all Come your fairies, on. and you're about to get that last hit, but he makes a quick movement and knocks you off the platform, and now you've just fallen off the platform, and now you don't even get to... to you got to start the whole fight over again. He's got all and his health gets, back because he knocked you uh -huh. off. He's and it gets dick. even faster at the end? Oh, my God. I just... No. You know he's in your new Zelda game, right? I already beat him with no problems. <laughs> Is he, is he the worst? Is he, is he the worst boss in there too? Big worm with a glowy red ass. He, 
he was he was he had, he that is actually the only boss that has killed me in the new Zelda so far. So if that's saying something. For God's sake. What the <laughs> hell am I doing here? <laughs> Any other any other console bosses you guys think that really kind of stick out? Um, I, it's not a particular boss, but Contra is one where I don't think you can get through the all the bosses without. The oh my god, Contra! Don't even talk to me. About, I was terrible at Contra back in the day. So horrible. It was so fun, and I have it on emulator. But oh my god, I just am not. Oh, Contra annoying. All right, let's go ahead and throw it over to a Twitter question, and we'll get back to a caller. I'm going to try and weave in and out of these so we can uh, try and get to all the questions for tonight. So, Man, Joe Chad's got some us... great recommendations on hard games. Oh, God. Red Ring of Death? That's a yeah. good one. Login boss for the original version 2.0 Final Fantasy. Jeez. Joe asked, uh, since, this, uh, since it has been snowing all day, what are some of your favorite winter areas slash levels in games? Well, can I say Mario? Is there a good ice level in Mario? It's like the way, I read this question. Can I, literally, <laughs> let me answer your question by freaking guessing. Uh, uh, is there one in Mario? <laughs> Mario, Mario. There's, there's got to be one in Mario somewhere <laughs> in the thirty years that he has existed. Mario. Winter slowly. levels aren't historically done very well. Uh, they're kind of like underwater levels. They're not it's slide, really it's slide on the ice and, and hope you don't fall down to your death. Yeah, oh god, don't even bring up ghouls and ghosts. Uh, no. We can bring up no. Zelda. I mean, Zelda had that ice, had the ice palace. Dude, the... cool, cool mountain. That's what it was. I knew there was, a, I, yeah. I told you there was an ice level in Mario. It's called cool, cool mountain. What about the stupid ice level in Mario Kart? Oh my God! Screw that! Oh, and those things that knock you into the water and turn you into a stupid icicle. I hate those things. Fuck you, penguins! Did anyone else play the? the oh gosh, this was all the way back when, like, I don't. I think it was like a Mac. Back when it was like a Macintosh '95 or something. Um, <laughs> the computer that I had had a game. It was like a ski game where you had to slalom back and forth and and like hit certain. Uh, flags and go on the opposite side of each flag, but then there would also be like an abominable snowman that would come out and eat you. That's that's a snow game I remember a lot. SF, <laughs> Ducktales had SSX. the Alps. Does anybody did anybody play uh a uh, uh, 1080 snowboarding when the N64 yes. came out? <laughs> that game, that game is how I learned my 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 circumferences. Like when it finally came time that I was old enough to know like what circles were, I was like half circle, that's 180. Full circle, that's a 360. Circle and a half, 540. Next 720. But there is nothing in between 720 and 1080. That would just go up to a 1080. There's no there's no half circle after 720. Yeah, there, there is. There is. Tony Hawk was famous for being the first 900 for a long time yeah. on skateboards. There was a 900. Yeah. Even. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know. There, there is no number between 720 <laughs> and 1080. Is, that, yes. That is 180 more or less than the other one. <laughs> there is. It just no. That circles actually stop. If you talk uh, to geometry uh, teachers, if it they stop. If, if it ex teacher, if it existed, why wasn't it in 1080 snowboarding? Because they have a number <laughs> zero to 1080. Why would they just skip it? Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. 720. 720. But then there was nothing until 1080. Nothing. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh. Do you remember the old winter spring? Before Kata? Yes. I mean, it's pretty much the same, but winter spring was always. And how you tried to get to Hyjal through the, uh, the, um, the glitches. You would, like, jump on the mountains. And then people would try and get into Hyjal. Do you remember that? It was through Winter Spring. Winter Spring was always one of my favorites. Hmm. I don't really remember much of Winter Spring. I just remember Winter Spring was always that zone, and it's like a max level. All right, well, I'll go there. I'm almost max level. I'll go there for like yep. to finish off a couple quests and never come back here again. Oh, uh, War Historian, you are my hero in chat. Just brought up the best winter area ever. Ilum. 
oh, just that one. That won so many awards, if I'm not mistaken, right? <laughs> so best, many awards that they shut it down world, for a while. <laughs> best world PvP zone. It's too high in demand. We're gonna have to bring it uh, completely. Out. We're gonna have to shut this down for a little while. Awesome. Way to go. Good job, Ilum. All right, let's go ahead and open up the lines and take another caller. Caller, you're on the line with Gameburger After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hey, guys, it's uh, Zygmus from the chat. And uh, up, my man? question for today is... What's up? Um, my question for today is, you know, me as, you know, a player, um, does, you know, getting hype, you know, as me, you know, getting hype, and ex you know, excited for a video game, you know, it's coming out very soon, um, you know, th can that enhance my you know enjoyment of the game or or can it degrade it can i depends say on both? the person can i say both it can do absolutely both i think depends on the person and the game really? why do you say that kiggles um because sometimes people get way too hyped up for a game and then when it doesn't live up to every expectation that they have it becomes the worst game ever even when it's not the worst game ever well, and that's what I'd say. Um, uh, just, just real quick, is there, um, caller, is there a game that specifically maybe you you're have in mind that you're maybe specifically hyped for? We'll use you, you um, as an example. Well, I'm not mind. really... Well, because of, like, a couple games that came out in 2011, I haven't been really hyped for any games because I kind of had this epiphany that, well, there's not really... Like, what is... What does hyping a game really do? Like, what does it enhance, like, your enjoyment in the game, like, at all? Like, that doesn't... It doesn't really... There doesn't really seem to point to hyping up a game it just seems like it's better to just you know kind of put the game on your radar as something you're interested in and then just kind of going in there fresh you know i, I mean to star citizen metal gear solid 5 sure you know, but... i think I, and i can even i can even speak to uh example of zelda specifically um i emphatically happy that i have a 3ds and i'm playing zelda Hype the game. Really, we we hadn't heard. How, how are you enjoying it? I loved. I'm and I'm still loving the game. Here's the thing. I'm not letting my hype. Affect... Heard one of the hardest bosses ever put in a video game is in that some bitch. It's true. It's true. Um, I I I I think I had a lot of hype personally for this 3D 3DS Zelda, and especially because the reviews were so good. I didn't just let my own personal hype dictate that I wanted to play this game. I let the the reviews hype saying that it's one of the best Zeldas in years, um, which isn't much of a statement considering Zeldas only come out once every 10 years. Um, that aside, th I don't know. I found that, that I'm sitting here, I'm playing it. It's not everything in my head that I expected it to be. It's not anything new. It's not anything exciting. It's Zelda. It's exactly what it needs to be. It's Zelda. But it's not this holy grail of a video game that I always imagined it to be. But that's not a bad thing. I don't think there's anything wrong. I think that I think that people run away with hype and 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 in their own expectations definitely set themselves up to be let down when a video game is bad. But there, I don't think there's anything wrong with letting yourself buy into the hype of a video game because, like I said, I'm still enjoying Zelda. It's not everything i ever wanted it to be but it doesn't mean that i'm not loving the game and playing it every chance that i get yeah and i think the the big thing here is um people need to ask themselves one question before during and after they finish a game did who's you coming with me did you enjoy it yeah who's coming with right did you enjoy it if you enjoyed it then it was worth the money and i mean if you get replay out of it, then it was worth the money. I haven't gotten hyped for a game since... I don't even know when. Um, but I will, I will listen to other people's... The most important thing to me is if the people whose opinions that I, hi that I value highly say that they, that they enjoy it and that they think I would enjoy it. And that gets me more... more hype for me is more about getting in the right frame of mind to play a game so you enjoy it more. Whereas sometimes people hype things and they're like, oh my God, this is going to be the best thing ever. Oh my God, oh my God. It's going to make me come like seven times because it's so awesome. And then it doesn't. And wow. they're all like, be, they're all like wow, wow. Wow. 
I don't even smoke anymore, but I'd need a few after that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of with with you, Kiggles, that I don't I don't generally get hype for games because I view it as it's it's a hobby. It's also a collection thing for me, and then it's also the game breaker slash YouTube slash video stuff for me. So I don't really get hyped. I'm following all the things and and having fun. That being said. The reason I used to get hyped for MMOs in particular because I I just love the whole community uh, aspect of that that type of game that genre. Uh, I got badly badly burned by Final Fantasy fourteen the the first one which I had hyped uh, along burn with a lot of other burned. people. Yep, burn got burned bad. I had hyped with a lot of other people very high up there. Then we played in the beta. And we we flat out told Square Enix, don't release this. This please don't, please don't. Uh, we're your fans, and we can't play this. Uh, and they did anyway, uh, which was really disappointing. And then follow that up, uh, you know, a year or so later with Star Wars: The Old Republic, which I won't say uh, hit me as hard as Final Fantasy XIV did, because at least the game was enjoyable from zero through fifty. But uh, but once you got there to the end game. Ugh, I got burnt on that too. So I tend not to get too hyped about MMOs right now. Am I looking forward to Elder Scrolls? Yes. Am I looking forward to Wildstar? Yes. Am I looking forward to see what titles like Arcage and Blade and Soul and other titles that are elsewhere in the world and are aiming to come west? What can they offer? What can they bring? Yes. Do I tend to let it overhype me or, or get pumped about them anymore? No, because honestly, I've been burned more times than it's paid off. Uh, and I think that just happens with age. So I'm getting old, Chapman. I can't listen to you talk about getting burned because I just want to make burn puns throughout your entire speech. But that's just... Okay, Sigmus is saying, what positivity does hype bring? And it depends on who's doing the hyping and what the hyping is all about. Now, playing up what is good about a game and what you find enjoyable about a game to someone or to, you know, to people public at large is fine with me. But if it's the, if it's this hype, hyperbolic, you know, hyping where it's like, oh, this is the best game ever. This is like groundbreaking, revolutionary, all those stupid hype words, I immediately just say, nope, you're not, I'm not buying into that until I play it. It's, it's not, it, that's, that's how, that's, you can hype it to a point, but un until it gets ridiculous, and then it's like, all right, well. Oh, now see, but I'm just... looking. I'm looking at this as pre-launch hype. Is is the the topic here? I mean, if we're talking about after a game comes out, if you want to get hyped up about a game that you are you love, I don't care if you take it to ridiculous proportions. That's the game you love. Go ahead, defend it. Go ahead and and try to get other people to play it. That's the point of the game. Find the people that like it and make them your walking advertisements. I'm talking about the pre-release hype, where the there's very few people that have a reason to actually be pumping the hype and have played the game enough to be warranting whether the hype level should be high or low that's the hype that i get burnt at and is there a good pre-game hype i think there is i think for a minute for a minute wildstar was at that perfect level of pre-launch hype i think they had a, a enough people in the mmo space that knew about the game and were looking at it and were interested and liked what they were hearing and were talking about the game but not so many people that it was instantly going to fail because the sheer number of people just couldn't be held on to. But then they pushed the game out of 2013 and into 2014, and I think they instantly lost all that good hype that they had built up. So, yeah, I do think there is a level of good pre-launch hype where you've got enough people talking about the game. Nobody's blowing it out of proportions yet. They're having a good time waiting for the game, talking with the devs and things like that. And Wildstar had that, but I think they lost it by delaying the game as long as they did. And and I think, personally, hype needs to be community-based, needs to be player-based and not dev-based, because devs are always going to say their game is awesome, and, and they should. You know, they worked on it really hard, in most cases, and... Yeah. They're they're going they're gonna they're gonna they they're, they need to make money off of it so of course they're gonna hype their game and I know I harp I harp on Hearthstone a lot but 
let's let's go back to why did I hate Hearthstone so much? And I'm all not right. saying it's because a bad it's a bad game, but <laughs> it's be- no, it's because it's all I because- hear from the studio is Hearth. <laughs> it's because Hearthstone, it's- Hearth Kiggles, Hearth. You're gonna get Riot flamed on the league, internet for saying it wrong. League is Riot. No, but the thing is, is they inflated the hype by giving by giving keys to a specific of people and then trying to, you know, trying to get the hype up because it, they inflated it all to hell, and it made some people resent it. And so that's where hype can bite you in the ass. That's all I'm saying. Don't get your go hype to... too far up there. Don't yeah, get don't get it hurt. Far, too big, <laughs> too far, too don't much. Don't get your don't get a hype priaprism. You might need you might need to go to the doctor. I'm sorry. Because if you if the hype gets too big, yes. and too hard, might not be able to finish. If it lasts more than four hours, consult a doctor. Let's go ahead and open up the uh, lines for another caller. But before we do, I want to tell you guys about a sponsor that helps make every show we do here at Game Breaker possible. A great, great service that I think a lot of you guys who went to the movies this weekend should check out. I've been saying it before. I'm going to say it again. Audible.com is the perfect solution to your desolation of smaug woes. Because I'm sure you guys went and saw The Hobbit this weekend. If you didn't, you might end up around Christmas or New Year's around the family. You're like, let's go see a family movie. They're going to ask you to go see The Hobbit. And if you do, I hate to break it to you, it's going to leave you at a cliffhanger. It is. It's not going to finish the whole entire story. They're going to tell you enough to get you excited, but they're going to tell you to come back next year and pay more money. Will you tell them, no thank you, I'm going to go over to audible.com and check out the rest of The Hobbit for free right now. If you head on over to audible.com, you can actually download the audiobook of The Hobbit and get the entire experience not broken up into three sections like Mr. I forgot who the director of The Hobbit That would be, uh, who is Peter Jackson. Jackson. Mr. Yeah. Peter Jackson taking it upon himself to split up a great book into three parts. No. Head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. You can download The Hobbit for free because you'll get a free 30-day trial as well as a free audiobook by signing up right now. Audible.com slash gamebreaker. Guys, Audible is a great service. If you guys are not a fan of The Hobbit at all, if you do not go see The Hobbit, that doesn't mean audible.com is not for you. They have a bunch of of other video game related materials. They got a bunch of other movies. They've got like the Hunger Games. They've got Ender's Game. They've got World of Warcraft books. They've got Diablo books. They have topics for everyone. I highly encourage you guys to check out audible.com and check out some of the awesome audiobooks that they have because it's a great service. I think a lot of people have lost the, the desire to read as we get older, as we get busier and our days become more full. But I promise there's always time for an audiobook, whether you're sitting in the car whether you're doing your dailies, whether you're just kind of moving around, but maybe you've got a phone in your pocket, which you can actually download the app and listen to the audiobooks on the go right through your uh, smartphones, whether it be Android or Apple, they've got it for both. So check out audible.com. And if you guys, like I said, head on over to audible.com slash Game Breaker. You're not only helping support Game Breaker, but you're getting a great service as well. So check out audible.com slash Game Breaker. All right, let's go ahead and open up the lines, get the show moving. Caller, you're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hi, it's Remnant Pass from the glorious nation of Game Breaker. How's it going, sir? My, uh, it's going good. My question to you guys is, with the somewhat success of the Final Fantasy remake, is there any other MMO you would like to see remade? Remake as in you're talking 14. Complete, correct? yeah. Any other MMO that you guys would like to see remade that maybe came and gone, burned into the ashes? You want it to have a nice rebirth? I've already got mine. Yeah, mine isn't dead, but oh, oh God, are you going to say Tibia? <laughs> yes! Yes, I am! It just Bring dawned on me. I was tibia. like, I was about to say mine, and I was like, he's going to freaking say Tibia, isn't he? Oh, man. Tibia hype train coming through. Tibia 2.0. Now with better graphics, we've upgraded to 32 bit. <laughs> this shit looks like Super Nintendo. Uh, 
there's there's quite a few that I would like actually. Uh, I am looking. I, I don't. I, this one I'll keep real short because I don't think it counts as a remake since there's a new version out. I would like to see the original Fantasy Star online in a more uh, contemporary uh, AAA atmosphere. Uh, although Fantasy Star Online 2 is enjoyable to play, the just it's not officially in English yet, so you're going to need to download a bunch of extra stuff to play it. Um, there is a game out now that I would like to see shut down for a little while and rebooted. Uh, and that would... That would be The Secret World. Uh, I love The Secret World. I own all the issues to date so far. I can't wait to jump into that every chance I get, which isn't nearly as often as I would like. Uh, but I keep buying things from them because I love the game and support it. There are huge flaws with the game, though. Combat is a big one of those flaws in my book. And they do so much right with story and investigation and atmosphere, and there's just so much good going on there. There are instances, I love the way their dungeons work. They're fun, they're engaging. Uh, I enjoy a lot of that game, but big key elements like PvP and combat just aren't, they're not there, and I would love to see the game taken offline for a while and that aspect of those things rebuilt uh, or reborn, as it were, being an XIV guy. And, and push back in. Kegels, what about you? I wow. want new ones. I don't care about old ones. You want, I, you want a 2.0? No, I don't. I don't know. I would. I would love. And I keep on saying I want to buy Final Fantasy XIV because it looks really good. Um, How have you not? It's like free to good home uh, for <laughs> digital download every other weekend. Like I, it's, it's it's like seven dollars and a cup of coffee. From most downloaded places. I don't know. Because I don't... I, I play one MMO at a time, honestly. Um, I get my PvE kicks every week with the people that I raid with, and I get my PvP stuff from League, and I play other things along the way. So I, I honestly focus on one MMO at a time. And so once WoW gets done, I want to talk about how I used to love MUDs. Do we, does anyone remember MUDs? I want I want like a good remake of a mud like like a really popular mud. I loved muds. Why? Kiggles, because what you gotta do, so... what you got to do to remake mud is go outside to your garden, turn on your hose, and then spray it into the dirt. Move move the soil around. Oh my god! And... No, no wrong wrong kind of mud. Yes, okay. you're you're multiple user dungeons, buddy. It's basically a text version of Dungeons and Dragons. And I don't know, it just, it seems like, like, all those, all those games were kind of more, it's, it's akin to, like, how I say that books are always better than movies, because you get, I get more from MUDs, honestly, because I have a good imagination, and I don't, I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I can create a better world in my head than most of the worlds. You know, the what? Like, <laughs> okay, I don't come know. on, kids. I don't know. Come on, saying they should make a good, a new good mud. Really? <laughs> really? You know what? Of, you know what's really missing from the gaming landscape today? More games like Zork. Could yes. we have a couple? More, <laughs> yes. could we have a couple more text-based adventures. Great games, great games in their regard. I would, I still play them occasionally on a Commodore 64. That is not even a lie. But saying that they need to remake some more of them or some good ones currently—that's just silly. Go go play D and D on the tabletop with your twelve buddies. Come I just on. don't have I just don't have an MMO that I that I want to remake because I because I didn't play MMOs before. It was RPG. Well, then say you don't have one to, re to remake. Not that we should make more <laughs> graphic calculator software. Get the hell out! Of here. Oh my god, I love that. Did you ever play Drug Dealer on your TI eighty four? It was no, awesome. Fall down, <laughs> fall down, sir. That was the calculator game to play. Was fall down. Oh, man. No, I wasn't saying they were the same thing, Arthur. I said it's like saying, you know what we're missing is some great text-based adventures. I know that mods are not the same as text-based, but for the most part, the most famous mods were text-based. Let's start over to Twitter and questions. Kiggles wants go. more. You know what yes. you know would be great for you, Kiggles? Just get an Audible <laughs> thing. If you just like reading and listening, just get an Audible account. Go for it, brother. Free book. 
Let's start over to a Twitter question and before we throw it to our last caller. Squishy, a good friend of ours, asked us, obviously off the coattails of the Heroes of the Storm Q&A that came out, do you think that a player being controlled by an AI when they de-seed is a good idea in a mobile-style game? Right, this was big news. Blizzard came out. They announced that in Heroes of the Storm, if someone disconnects, the AI will take control of the character uh, and play for you until you return or maybe you never leave it all. Gut reaction amazing great feeling now it's not suddenly a four on five because someone fed their lane and gets pissed off and leaves oh that's come on great. but it really is it really is as long and as it doesn't that's why as, i said that's as, my gut reaction but when you really yeah. when you think about what it's like we'll use league as an example let's not pretend if you're if you're playing a champion you're good at bots are not hard to overcome no matter how oh, yeah. good of bots you're playing it's still just a computer, and any player can play better than them. And the and it might be better off to have your unfed person who disconnected or left back at the fountain where they're not feeding the person instead of trying to fight someone who got fed, and then it's just a computer, so they get obliterated anyway. Yeah. I gut reaction. I loved the idea, but I think that it 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 it's gonna have to prove itself to be a good feature. I, I wish I could remember the game. There was there was a game that I distinctly remember playing sometime in the last year-ish, whether I was doing a first look video for a for a different site or something. But there was a game uh, that did exactly this: that if if somebody DC'd, they became an AI character. Um, it was a strategy warfare game. Now that it's it's coming back to me, and I'm thinking more about it, uh, and you could suck up the other person's armies. It's it's a good idea on paper. You're absolutely right. I have never once seen it implemented well because the, a bot is just not going to behave like a player would amongst watching you know multiple other teammates play. So in something like a league setting where you see four people that are clearly working as a team on objectives, the bot cannot see that teamwork and see the end game to play as a team member. So it becomes just a a feed or something to keep somebody busy. And can you imagine? Uh, it, I, hate it. I, I hate it. I hate it. I think honestly. it. I think it, again, in referring to league, I think it like a bronze and a silver level. It might be a benefit, even maybe just to play that game. But the second you start getting into you know platinum and diamond and challenger, where these players are just insanely good, throwing a bot in there is just yeah. asking. Well, I and I think I think it would have to be something where. You teams could agree on it beforehand, like you could play. You could like where you can turn the feature on and off with a majority vote of the of the however many players. And the other thing is is that the disconnection can't be. It 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 would work if the disconnections weren't blasted. Like if people didn't know that this person disconnected. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because once someone knows that that's a bot. They are going to target that bot and kill it. They are just going to destroy the bot. Do you understand what I'm saying? So sure. they would have to. They would have to. They would have to Not make it so that a disconnection isn't isn't um isn't a global thing. So they don't know that someone disconnected. I don't think they do that in league, though. I've seen plenty of games that end, and they're like, "Oh, so and so left," or suddenly random surrenders with only four people. And I'm like, "Oh, someone left? I didn't even realize." So I don't think that any any game out. I don't want to say any game. I'll just say I don't think that league broadcasts if a player disconnects to the enemy team. Yeah, and and some people in chat are saying that a bot is always better than being short, and I don't think that's necessarily true. And I'm not a League of Legends master or a MOBA master, and everybody knows that, so I could totally be talking out of my ass here. But you guys maybe can back me up. Just logically, mathematical-wise, I would think that there are situations where you would rather play a man short than to constantly be feeding, say, one person on the other team in that lane. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, so I don't think saying a blanket statement of a bot is always better than playing short is true. I think math-wise, there would be instances where you'd rather play a man short. 
Yep. I think the better I think the better thing would and I know this is like I don't know how this would work, but I think the better thing would to be would be that your team picks that the corresponding player on the other team gets paused. That 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 player so you're playing a four on four until the person reconnects. That is never Ever in a million years gonna happen. I know it's not, but I'm just saying Ever. that would be the most fair thing to do. Can you imagine that? Could you imagine that? I'm top laning against someone and I feed. Now my whole team's yelling at me, quit the game. So their top lane, who's got 20 kills now, is taken out of the game. <laughs> yeah, that would work. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, or just I know it flashes would, a random saying. message. Your character is now frozen until character yeah. on other team right? reconnects. What? <laughs> <laughs> right? That would cause so many problems. I think we should just do away with multiplayer gaming. Then we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> just all, hear, all single I hear, player. I hear what you're saying. I, I think that there, there, can, there can be other creative solutions. And like I said, um, just to round this out and get back to the caller, gut reaction, I was like, oh, this is awesome. That's, that's great. I would rather play a 5v5 than a 4v5. And then I thought about it a little bit more, and I was like, I don't know if I'd rather play a 5v5 versus a 4v5 if it's just a bot. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I still trust Blizzard. I'm still looking forward to uh, Here's the Storm, so we'll have to see. We got two callers left. I made a mistake, so let's go ahead and open up the lines and get this next caller in so we can get to the last one. Caller, you're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hello, this is Jiganita from Denmark. How's it going? Uh, still early in the morning, so, you know. Uh, I have a question about uh, guilty pleasure and purchase, purchasing some things. For recently, I bought some uh, pills from Jinx, and I will soon get a cool plushy head with an attachable candle. So I was, so I was wondering, out of, out of all your uh, guilty pleasure of purchasing things such as a uh, collector's edition or maybe a deal where you get something extra on it, What's your favorite guilty pleasure of buying something? Guilty pleasure. Um, you guys take this away. I'm going to actually pull this up. Quick, okay, Burns off to go find his. Kiggles, we're going to throw to you here real quick while I find a picture of something. What's your favorite guilty pleasure? Uh, of, of like collector's items or anything of that nature? Anything? 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 Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, you stalled for enough time because I was able to find my picture. So this... This is my guilty pleasure. Uh, I opened up one of my Christmas gifts earlier, and my girlfriend actually got me uh, the World of Warcraft uh, Arthas Syndragosa Death Knight set. Um, and while that specifically is not my most guilty pleasure, down below is, is my nerd shelf that has been slowly accumulating a lot of just trinkets, fun you know, items, things that I've gotten from developers, things that I've purchased. You know, uh, right over, actually right here, you can see like the pop cap stuff that I got at BlizzCon. That to me is is my guilty pleasures. I, I've i been collecting my guilty pleasures through, through gifts and purchases. I love displaying it, but I'm not one to to go out. I've been burned. Here's the thing. I've been, I've been burned. Get it, Mike Burn? I've been burned by so many collector's editions that I've purchased that I've never utilized ever. I can't tell you how many collector's editions of Final Fantasies I've got, and then I don't do anything with them. So I've stopped completely with collector's editions. And I, I don't know. I like, I like holding these things as trophies. Um, I just don't tend to invest in them myself. That's just me, though. What about you guys? So I've got a couple. Uh, and obviously the stuff that was closest at hand was Final Fantasy XIV related because of doing XIV Reborn, so a lot of this is laying right around the, the studio setup here. But, um, yeah, so besides video gaming in general, just collecting all that crap, uh, I'm a huge sucker for soundtracks, collector sets, and then odd paraphernalia and... Uh, in particular, autographs. Uh, so things like the the fourteen banner here. Uh, you'll if you watch XIV Reborn, you've also probably seen the ten foot uh, now released uh, official signage for Final Fantasy fourteen. There's also the Final Fantasy fourteen cloth flag. 
there's the uh, there's the before meteor uh, soundtrack which was uh, you know not cheap if you know anything about Squeenix and their stuff I got some on my face whatever um, there then there's that collector set with shaft you're you're familiar with this right I mean you know that this is a I, I, pretty my, heavy the front of my heavy. face and that box are very acquainted Yes, uh, and then of course, I, you know, even having this one, of course, had to get this one, right? I mean, that just makes sense that you would spend a, the the money again uh, to get that one. So, so you, yeah, I a... I like all. The, I'm a sucker for this shit. I really am, and this just happens to be Final Fantasy 14 related again because I do the show. Uh, I've got World of Warcraft. The same stuff, the collector sets up there for all those. I'll get the Warlords of Draenor collector set when I jump back in uh, for the the expansion. I'm a sucker for all of that stuff. Oh, this doesn't even count that I have multiple copies of this game on PlayStation, too. So so here's a question. I tweeted out that picture that I showed, and uh, this Twitter follower of mine, Ben Radford, tweeted this back to me about uh, you know seeing my nerd shelf to be his pretty much nerd memorial wall over there. Do you display... Your stuff? Do you have any of your stuff that you collect on display? No. Or does it just sit in a box? No, it's or not in a box. Area? It's not in a box. But none of it's... I, I wouldn't say it's displayed. If you came over, Shaftnit, and you came down and you said, hey, let me see the, the PC where you're filming the shows, and I brought you down here, you would see most of it uh, on the in the various cabinets. that They don't have doors. They're just like bookshelves and stuff like that. So you would see all of this stuff here, but you would have to come down to my basement to see it. You know, it's not in my living room or in a glass case or anything like that. Now there are things that you would see upstairs. Uh, for instance, I have a framed Black Mage poster from PAX, uh, 17 by 11, so pretty pretty big, uh, that is signed by Yoshi P and uh, the sound designer, the composer Soken from uh, Final Fantasy 14 and some of the other devs. And I have other autograph stuff like that that is framed nicely. You would see that stuff upstairs. But as far as the figurines and the collector sets and all that stuff, that's all down here. Yeah, I live in my wife's basement chat. Get it right. It's not my mom's. <laughs> my <wife's basement. laughs> oh. All right. Let's go ahead and open up the why? call. I don't us. wait. Can I just why? Why do you guys collect that stuff? I just. I, I don't find you, any. I don't, I don't find it. any use for it at all. It just takes up space, and I am very minimalist. Like I enjoy my games, but I am not. No, I don't want all that shit in my house. But I agree with you. Like I said, I, to a certain extent, I agree with you. I've found myself in a position where I don't. I don't buy this stuff voluntarily. Like, look at it. Okay, so I've got World of Warcraft box sets from when I bought the game, all of my games in the background, all the way, these are PlayStation 2 games, by the way, so it's not like I've been, it's not like I just bought all this stuff recently. PlayStation well, 3 games, Blu-rays, animes, like this is stuff that I've collected over the years. The Shaw was a gift from Blizzard, and and Cindragosa was a gift from Ashley, and, and the, the League of Legends statue was uh, a gift that Riot gave for going to the World Finals. Like, I don't know. This is these are these are things to me, and I, I'm just trying to follow with what you said. These are things to me, not stuff I would buy on my own. But when you're gifted these really nice yeah. things, you don't want to just pass them away or put them in a closet. I felt like I wanted to display them, and what better way than to put it on a shelf right above my computer, where I where I do all my gaming anyway. See, See now, yeah. my rationale is a little bit different, though. My <laughs> rationale is. Uh, there was a time in my life growing up where my parents ate beans and rice for dinner for a week and a half because that's all the money that was in the house to do things. And so growing up and then going to college, I, my wife and I worked our asses off to be in a better situation than our parents. And now that we have been and are blessed, luckily, to, to continue to be, I get to enjoy some of the things that I really would have liked to have been able to have back then. Uh, so it's kind of, I guess, uh, maybe I need therapy on the whole, I'm reliving my childhood thing. I don't know. But these are the things that I enjoy. I don't drink. I don't smoke anymore. I don't beat the kids. You know, I don't have, I don't fix classic cars or anything. <laughs> this and close-up magic and stage magic are my hobbies. So they're what I spend my money in. And uh, I think so that... for me, it's, it's a, just fun it's my hobby 
to follow that up even again even bringing it back into what i have like my most prized possession on that shelf are the two original zelda ocarina of times the original gray version that was the first one that i ever got and then the first gold version of ocarina of time that i ever found to us to uh, to to us the gaming crowd they're like trophies I don't bowl. I, I didn't. I, I never really cared about collecting sport trophies when I was in high school. Like to me, the games that I played, the 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 figurines that I get, they're trophies. And and just like people like displaying off their achievements with their trophies of their bowling. Oh, or, or okay, I get it now. Cause yeah. I have I have all of my all American things on plaques, and those are I don't have them hung up yet, but I need to hang them up. But yeah, okay, I get that now. I have all of my trophies, my Big Ten trophies, and my NCAA trophies, and my medal from World University Games. Okay, I see that now. Unfortunately, or I mean, we could just keep it simple and just say I'm compensating for a very small penis. <laughs> that's 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 what I think first. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what you wanted to hear anyway, right? Right. So, exactly. There you go. Yeah. And with that comment, you guys can follow Mike Byrne right down there at Magic Man One. You should catch him every week right here on After Dark as well as all over Game Break and <laughs> XIV Reborn. It'd be a Magic Man 1, soon to be 3.5 of pleasure. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> be, sure to, be sure to catch him all over right here at Game Breaker and each and every week right here. Zach Schultz, you can follow him right down there at the Zach Schultz. We also like to call him Kiggles. Be sure to catch him each and see every week. See you in 2014. Right see you guys in 2014. Kiggles, I'll see you in 2013. Yeah. In like two weeks. You guys can follow me right down here at Mike Chapnick. Be sure to follow me at Mike Chapnick. Check out Waypoint, the League of Legends uh, uh, recap show that I do, as well as Law Nation, the YouTube channel that I run. Um, be sure to catch and check out everything that Game Breaker puts out each and every week on GameBreaker.tv, as well as follow us on Twitter at GameBreakerTV. Thank you guys so much for watching. We couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you for calling in. And if you haven't tried calling in, be sure to tune in next week. See you guys next time. This was a short show. I didn't even drink a whole bottle.